Hi, Steve Gilmore. This is the Gilmore Gang. Uh, it's Friday, and uh, that's what it is. It's Friday. Okay, well, we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, so Robert Scoble, welcome. Hey, how are you doing, man? Uh, you tell me, where are you? I'm at Microsoft in Mountain View in Silicon Valley. Uh, we're here for the uh, Mama Bear Conference, which is going on right now. Uh, Dave McClure's uh, 500 Startups is uh, running a new conference for people who are building apps and things for kids. Should be fun. Cool. And uh, to your right uh, in uh, San Jose, I guess it is, Kevin That's Marks. Right. Welcome, Kevin. Yes, I was in Mount View yesterday for um, IAW at the History Museum, just around the corner. Oh, well, I like to hear about that as well. I was uh, on the East Coast for most of of this week, so I missed that for about the first time, I think. Yeah, that's, uh, the people were asking after you. Yes, well, so was I. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, and uh, Keith Tier, welcome, Keith. Thank you for having me. I noticed that Robert's looking more borgified than even last week, and he hasn't shaved. <laughs> no shaving. Uh, got these big headphones on so I can hear in a noisy environment. So what's going on, Keith? You know, my life is dominated by my own stuff, so I don't even know what's going on. I was hoping you were <laughs> going to kick off and tell us what was going on. Well, uh, Facebook's rumored to be buying Waze. And I saw that. Do you think it's true? I. Uh, I sure hope so, because that, that's going to be a valuable property in this age of context. It really, you know, somebody was talking to me about Apple yesterday and the fact that Apple passed on this. You know, I, I think Apple missed out here. Um, I love Waze, by the way. I, I used it on the way here, and it showed me where three accidents were, and it was quite accurate about that. And it showed me uh, exactly where the, where the um, traffic uh would be, and it's not just a red line. It actually has pictures. People have left pictures and uh, reports, and there's, you know, you know where all the cops are and where the accidents are. And by the way, it routes you around all that stuff. It's much better at it than um, Apple and Google is at, at at most at routing around things like that. So, do you think this is part of Facebook's secret plan to build a total mobile OS, and they're just doing it one component at a time? Uh, I, I don't think Mark looks at the world as an OS. When you talk to a geek about OS, they, they're talking about the bit drivers you know, that are low down. I, for instance, the OS that's running this Google Glass is Android underneath. I don't think they're, they really care about the Android piece, the, 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 uh, what, what most technologists think of as the OS. Do they want to own everything above that? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. I, think that's, I think that's right. I think it's... Um, it's not really so much part of the OS as it's part of the replacement for the with Google, which is what you need if you're going to take Android as a basis and make a phone. Um, you need to be able to replace all the components that Google um, provides as part of the business dev part, which is um, Gmail, Maps being a huge one, um, the store, and um, the other you know, the Google apps. Um, and the, you know, the other also the Google apps that they provide on um, iOS, if you like. But if, you know, and, uh, Amazon has done this. Amazon has taken Android and put a, a new top half on it that's, that's all Amazon. But they haven't got maps on there. Their, their device is designed to do something else. It's designed to just be a consumption device. Um, Facebook, I think, would, would, it would make sense for them to provide an opportunity for um, manufacturers to, to, to have a, a non-Google alternative for the other half of Android. And I, I see this as part of that, definitely. It's what it really is is a human operating system. It's like there's you there's the real world and there's all the people you know and you've got to build all the components that let you interact with the world and then interact with all the people and um, those are the probably two biggest things anyone could be building right now right it's, it's, it's certainly fa Facebook's modus operandi is, is, is to be people centric well to be Facebook centric but about people um, so that they this the ways make sense that would make sense to them as a mapping uh, purchase over you know, buying another mapping um, site from a phone company or something, be precisely because it's um, human organized and put together ground up. And that, in, in the same way that, that wouldn't make sense to Apple, Apple would not see that as an advantage. They see that as a problem. All right, let's hold that thought for a second. Uh, some housekeeping. Uh, Keith, uh, tilt your camera so that your head is higher in the frame. That's it's funny because you've got a different shot of me than I've yes, got. Yes, it's not funny. It's a fucking drag. 
It's not your fault. It's mine. Uh, and uh, welcome, John Toshek. Hello, Steve. Uh, now I can I can see you, but I can't hear you. I can't hear me. Yeah, that's better. Well, I'll just hold the microphone. No, that's here. all right. I'll give you a more level. All right. Okay, and then Robert, if you could move your mic a little bit away from me, uh, I can hear you breathing, basically. Uh, that's not me breathing because I had my microphone muted. All right. Well, interesting. Everybody stop breathing. It actually sounds like a Borg. It's one of that that kind of shh sound. Well, it's better whatever somebody did. Or did everybody stop breathing? Yep. We were holding our breath here. All right. Well, I hear it. I can still hear it. So it's kind of whoever's breathing, uh, All right, Mike I'm going to kill uh, uh, this mic. Yeah, it's Kevin. Somehow really? it's you, Kevin. Yeah. I've got a gigantic external mic over here. It must be a bird. It's not in breathing. It's some other sound in the garden. Okay. All right. Back to the movie. So anyways, <laughs> so what were we talking about? Ways. Um, Facebook yeah, Ways is potentially buying Ways. Yeah. yeah, Ways is one story. What what else happened? I mean, other than Nokia coming out with a, a cool camera and another, and another phone. Um, we're all waiting for Google I.O. We expect to see a new device there. Oh, uh, one thing I learned about uh, Google Glass, there is an eye sensor right here. And the, Google is being very cagey about what that sensor does. I actually uh, had my friend uh, load up the uh, Wink app so I can wink at my glass, and once in a while it takes a picture. Sort of <laughs> like that, you know. Um, and what else is going on? It was a pretty slow slow news week overall, though there's lots of articles on tech meme that are sort of boring. I don't know. Uh, for me, uh, uh, the world is still Google Glass. That's what's new and disruptive in my life, and everybody keeps wanting to talk to me about it. And, was just on Bloomberg this morning. So I, the, this is kind of personal to my world, but it's not about anything I'm doing. Um, and Path got hammered this week for spamming people's address books, and then Facebook cut them off from being able to do the friends of friends thing. But I've noticed that Path, by reputation at least, if it's true, Path has gone from nowhere to about a million and a half downloads a week in the App Store which means that they're really breaking through after three years of not breaking through. Is that because they successfully got away with the spam stuff or is something going on there that I'm not aware of? Yeah, Dave Moran claims he's, he's not spamming, he's just uh, using the feature as he thought it was supposed to be designed, but I, I don't know, I've never seen that behavior. I, and I, anytime I see that invite screen, I know instinctively don't slow down and make sure Make sure you uh, don't click on the wrong thing. Um, I, you know, I, <sighs> so there. So so what their app does is the button says promote. So it's pretty explicit. It says promote, and it says it's going to promote your use of Path to all of your address book, which is exactly what it does. Um, but it, but it's just one word, promote. So if you don't really know what it means, you don't know what's going to happen. But it feels like it's worked. I mean, the bigger news is it's worked. The, the, what is essentially probably bad behavior gets rewarded. Yeah, uh, you know, and Facebook has uh, its own promote. I can promote my, uh, my uh, posts on, on Facebook um, by so spending $7, and then it gets more reach. It goes to more people and goes through the, more of the, of the edge rank filter. Um, therein, so lies, therein lies the wonders of the English language, because... Facebook's use of promote means get more people to see this post, whereas Path's use of promote means promote your use of my of this app to all of your address book contacts. Yeah. Meaning promote as in market, as opposed to promote as in elevate. <coughs> yep. Right. And people don't know of the consequences. I really, I, now that you explain what's going on, I really do hate this uh, virality meme uh, of startups where they try to do things that are you know that don't seem to have very many consequences like like this promote and they don't really explain the consequences that oh this thing's going to post this post to your twi twitter account or this thing's going to you know email all of your friends uh, on your contact list 
it's not very clear, and I think they're doing this very explicitly not to be clear, so that more people right. will click that promote button and push the product to more people. I really hate that. I, you know, um, but, but, but here's the bad news: is it's totally worked because. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I in the short term, it fails in the long term because people go, "Wait a minute, what's this shit?" Well, what it does is make it is make the the legitimate use of a promote uh, really uh, people become adverse to it. And uh, like I said, when I see anything that has a list of email or anything that has an automatic uh, feel to it, I slow down and I really think about what is this thing gonna, about to do because I've been burned so many times by app developers who think it's their right to tweet on my behalf or send something on e on email and it, and it, the wording is very very uh, nuanced it's really hard to pick up it, like you said where does it say that promote is going to email 1200 people you yeah. know it doesn't explain the consequences of hitting that button and if you're going really fast like we all do when we uh, get a new app uh, all of a sudden, you're emailing your, all your friends, and you know, and then all, all of a sudden, your friends are going, "What, what are you doing, man?" Um, I really hate that, and it does make me think less of Path for doing it. But but, do, I, but, but I Robert, on the other, on the other hand, do you think there's something real happening positively for Path because their numbers have suddenly spiked? Do, I, you, do you think it represents anything real, I, or is it just because of this? I think it works. Uh, well, first of all, Path numbers have been going up consistently for uh, years, you know, uh, I can see that they're spreading through uh, high school networks. Uh, I can see, I, I mean, I was at the bar the other day and uh, I listened to a conversation where a, a woman was telling her friend, the only thing I ever use now is PATH. And I'm like, okay, there's something real going on with PATH that, that people are finding uh, it more interesting for small group conversations than Facebook. but. I don't know that the, this has really helped the, their numbers out beyond that. John Tosh, I, I bet it has because anytime you spam the shit out of an email, you know there is a percentage of people who will go, "Oh, thanks. I think it My was going." Is, I think it was going up before. Uh, before I know, but, it, I, but think I think that's why they. I think that's why Facebook is overreacting is because uh, they they starting to see that this is a threat to them. Uh, you know, and Dave Marin used to work at the, at the company, so. I think it's just knee-jerk on Facebook's part. John Toshek, what do you think? I think uh, Facebook is uh, having a problem with uh, attrition right now in uh, most countries. I don't know if you covered it last week, but you know, there's uh, they're down in uh, high school and colleges, nine uh, percent or something like that. So it's a uh, it's a um, a model where. Uh, Facebook is still growing overall, and more traffic and more transactions. But there's a community feel that's uh, that might be lost when you uh, there's a tendency to over add friends, uh, you know, and and they, they want to get back into a smaller, uh, you know, a closer circle of friends. And you see this at the front, the uh, Facebook purge is going on right now, too, where people are just getting rid of hundreds of their friends who aren't their real friends. I think it's a good thing. This is a natural, uh, a natural thing for Facebook, and I think Path is picking up on this little bit right now. But if they, but if they're doing what they, what they say, which is you know blasting everybody with uh, delusionary stuff, then they're gonna. It's a short-term gain. Uh, I think, you know, it's just it's, people will just move on to the next one. Yeah. Yeah, I think that actually what's going to happen uh, is is that. Facebook has succeeded in pigeonholing them as being, uh, uh, you know, doing what you just said, when in fact they were already growing quite rapidly. Mm -hmm. So I think th this is hurting them, and I, it's it feels like PR wars to me more than anything. Uh, what? So uh, let's you let's. Think, you think Facebook is briefing against them, though? No, I mean I think I. I saw some comments by Dave Marin that just seemed to uh, be defensive and uh, a little uh, upset at the way Facebook was responding to them. But I think I think that they probably were their own worst enemies. But I do think there's something bigger going on. Uh, I was in a meeting the other night, and um, the talk was all about WhatsApp and uh, Line. 
Line just got dinged by Apple for in-app purchases as well. But there's this whole messaging, um, this whole messaging trend, which is much bigger than social networking. Uh, it came out this week that the number of over-the-top messages compared to SMSs is now about double, which is in the trillions per year. Uh, iMessage alone is doing two billion iMessages a day now. Um, so, so it feels like if you were to say what is the meaning of the word social in the age of mobile, it really doesn't equal joining a social network anymore. It kind of equals using your phone to do all these different things, messaging being the core of it, but photo sharing is one, uh, video calls is one, texting is part of it, um, email even is part of it. And the scale of that dwarfs Facebook. And so companies can get very big, very fast, and very global. I, I, I've just seen it. We're, we, we, in our first three weeks, We've got users in 138 countries in three weeks. We're small, tiny, not really part of this yet. But um, you see the breadth and the scale of it nonetheless. And it really does suggest that the meaning of the word social in a mobile era isn't the same as it meant when we were all glued to our desktops. Robert, you're either nodding at the ceiling or you're... No, I was uh, looking just at people passing me. by here at the Mama Bear Conference. He's, he's just saying peacock. <laughs> I saw a video with Tim O'Reilly. Uh, it was about a two-second video where he was explaining. I, I, I'm on a call. Sorry. See you. Where he was explaining how the uh, uh, the Google Glass worked. And it, it seemed like he was both excited and also had basically about 30 seconds of stuff to say about it. Uh, yeah, whereas anybody you who only has 30 not seconds able to, to, stop to say talking. about Google Glass is really hasn't thought very very deeply at all. Well, <laughs> not a are you, are, you uh, are you saying Tim O'Reilly isn't thinking deeply? I think he thinks very deeply the, all the time. No, no, uh, you know, but if that's all he can say, I, uh, Tim has written many, many, many words about Google Glass already. So I'm sure he has more than 30 seconds to say about uh, Google Glass. But I've seen a few journalists who just put it on for 30 seconds and then dismiss it outright, and it's like, oh, that's crap. You know, it's like, oh, really? Really? Yeah. Who? Who's, who? Uh, Mike Butcher is one. Well, he's in Europe, right? Yeah, but I, I let him try it for a few minutes, and he just wrote a whole post about how it's crap. <laughs> you know, it's like, really? Okay. Does That, that does not match... 95% of the reactions I have in the street with this thing. By the way, my son's school teachers were all meeting with us because we had an IEP for our, our uh, autistic son this week. And so he, 10 of his school teachers were in a room and they all were like, wow, this is cool. This, I want one. I, 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 this is crazy. <laughs> so if school teachers, and, and admittedly they're in, in the San Francisco area, so they're a little bit more exposed to technology than the average school teacher. But if school teachers want this thing, that tells me this is going to be a bigger deal than most of the m many of the journalists are making it out to be. You mean this computer it, thing is going to take off? You think? Yeah, you know, it, and we've heard this before. When the Apple II came out, people were like, "What? That's only for geeks." In fact, uh, Steve it Wozniak's was own boss. It was for geeks. Steve Wozniak's own boss thought nobody would buy a personal computer, uh, you know, at, at Hewlett Packard, and said, you "Go start a company." You know, you're you're not you're going to be back begging for a job in in a year. And of course, now Apple Computer is the biggest company of all, right? Well, I remember but when I looked at Apple and the Amiga and the PC, and I said, you know, this Apple thing, it's got one mouse button, and it's black and white. Who, you know, this, is, <laughs> this isn't going to work. Well, yeah. the Amiga was way ahead of Apple at the time. I mean, it, it was, <laughs> but, you know, the other part of the anything. calculation. Let me just say one word, PageMaker. Yeah. It was the app. The apps do it. It's all about the apps. Is that what we're saying? I think it is. Okay, well, this is real value. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so d I noticed that um, Murray in the chat posted this uh, this stat that Apple is only growing at one percent, but the overall smartphone market is growing at forty percent. And it he links to this VentureBeat article that says there were three hundred and eight million smartphones. Shipped in the first quarter of 213. We, we, uh, if in, Murray didn't exist, if Murray didn't exist, we'd have to invent him. You know, we would. Yes, he's a very valuable asset for uh, the Android story, so that 
John Tasha can think about other things for a couple of seconds. <laughs> but it does. Um, but the, to me, the staggering thing isn't Apple's growth. The staggering thing is the 308 million smartphones that shipped in one quarter. I mean, I remember when it used to be that there were a billion cell phones shipped in a quarter, and that seemed huge. And we're already at the point where a third of them almost are smartphones. By this time next year, it's going to be more than half. Yep. Uh, well, they're so gonna, they're going to be some interesting uh, perturbations. Is that the way to say it? Uh, uh, as a result of some of the supply chain issues that seem to be cropping up for a Apple. Uh, there were a couple of Apple Insider stories that were interesting. Uh, the net of which is that uh, it looks like uh, the iPhone 5S and whatever the iPhone plastic is and iPad 2 are going to be, you know, Mini 2 are going to be uh, slowed down a little bit because of this, these issues. Uh, so there's going to be the you know the next quarter. I guess the second quarter will it be uh, is going to be a lot lower than projections uh, from the analysts. So I think we're going to hear a lot more noise about how uh, Apple is in the toilet, uh, which I think is going to set up a blockbuster uh, next quarter. Mm -hmm. You know, but, uh, you think they're, they're sandbagging so they finish themselves when you start I don't think they're car. sandbagging. I think that they're that they're dealing with the fact that they've uh, been unable to produce breakthrough products that they can actually uh, take advantage of in terms of the number of them that they can produce. And I think they're they're tweaking it so that they, when they have a huge hit, which they will with the iPad Mini too, um, that they I can. You know, Steve, I, my argument against Tim Cook and Apple is not that they're not going to make uh, huge profits and that they're not going to have another iPhone and another iPad that, you know, sell a lot. I, you know, if, if I wasn't on Android and I was on iPhone, my iPhone contract would be coming up this year, and that means I would be in play for another new device. And, of course, I'm going to buy the newest, biggest, fastest you know, coolest device out there, and I'm probably not going to switch over to uh, Android. Uh, it's it after do after switching to Android for the last two months, it really is a, it it really is painful to switch ecosystems. N now it's getting to the point where it's painful for me to switch to, back to iPhone because I have you know, for instance, I have a much better keyboard on my Android device, and I have Google Glass meshed with my uh, Android device, and I have. A, a, apps that aren't available on iPhone now. And so now uh, I'm having the reverse problem of if I ever do want to go back to iOS, I, it, I'm going to suffer pain of going of switching ecosystems. So I, I, I've never I've never claimed that Apple's not going to be highly profitable. The thing that's wrong with Apple is Apple used to be a company that made me dream about the future. Yeah, I understand. And nothing you've said makes me dream about the future. I, I, I understand the dream argument. What I'm saying is, is that there are going to be uh, some interesting. Uh, I'm responding more to what Keith was talking about in terms of numbers around Android. Uh, John Toshek, uh Well, the numbers are true uh, too. That, that the market is growing faster than Apple is. That's absolutely true, and, and you can't deny anymore that one out of every ten, eight to ten devices is iOS. The rest, almost all the rest, are Android, and so. You know, you can't deny that anymore. I, I'm not I, denying it. I'm talking about uh, the revenue continues to be strongly favoring uh, Apple. Because the, they the have the most marketplace is customers. Absolutely true. Yeah. The, you know, there's the old line that Professor Erwin Carr used to say. You know, all those, you know, the rest, the, the people in the front, you know, it's like John Lennon said, you know, the people who are rattling their jewelry are the ones that are going to move the market. He didn't say that. He said that uh, the Beatles were more popular but, than Jesus. But Apple used to I, I, I also think, by the way, going back to the Amiga, that it, it re in my view at least, it really doesn't matter whether Apple has the best hardware measured by uh, CPU speed or numbers of CPUs or, or screen resolution. What really matters is whether the iOS operating system and the apps that run on it are more attractive to users than the Android stuff. And, uh, and, and I still think Apple is way in the lead, measured by just the human engagement with its OS versus Android. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's threatened there. And its ability to sell is almost entirely to do with its ability to produce, not its ability to sell. But, the, so, but 
and Keith, this is really important to watch. The tech passionates, the influencers, the the rich people, the are almost all iOS. I'm at, when I go to a tech conference, it, 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 hell, I just spoke in Amsterdam and I spoke with students. I asked them who has iOS, the, almost every hand went up. Who has Android, a few hands went up. That does not match the larger market, but in that small uh, segment, it, it's, it's uh, I think iOS. People are switching way over to Galaxy. That, by the way, it's who What did you say, apps. John? It's tech passionates. It's kids. Kids use apps at a much higher rate than old people, right? Old farts like are on the Gilmore gang. And um, speak for yourself. Well, you know, and then look at where the money, you know, when I talk to eBay C CTO or their head of mobile, you know, they say that most of their more of their dollars are coming from iOS. Well, that makes sense because when I go to the Ritz, I see mostly iOS devices, uh, i.e. The, the rich people have chosen Apple for a whole lot of reasons. And will they ever switch? That's that's what I'm wondering. Is well, it's because they can it's because they can afford it, and I think a lot of Android people would choose Apple as well if if they could afford Apple. Yeah, Ex except for one thing, Apple Apple is no longer making me dream about the future. Apple did for a long time. Apple, you know, Steve Jobs when he brought me the iPhone really made me think of a mobile world. Uh, in a much different way than Nokia or, or RIM or Microsoft were asking me to think about it. And but that's personality. I mean, no, like, we want Apple to play that role in our lives and bring something new and, and yeah, but that, that, new that's a, it has to be a person. If you, if you listen to Phil Schiller talking about a new product, you can hear the marketing script. Uh, you can eat, with Tim Cook, you totally hear it. With Steve Jobs, you heard his passion, and the script was invisible, even though there was one. And and that is a huge difference between Apple then and Apple now. Uh, you know, Steve Jobs personally called the Siri team 30 times to beg them to come to Apple and change the world. Where is where is that call coming from today? Uh, you know, but they'll, they'll like Apple's losing ways to Facebook, and maybe Ways is putting this rumor uh, out on the table to get Apple to, to wake up. I but think John, John, John I, I, dollars. What the fuck? What the hell are they doing with this billion dollar, one hundred forty-five billion dollars? Are they just going to return it to investors and everybody's going to go on happy? I'm not happy with that kind of Apple. Uh, Apple's I, better than that. Yeah, I, I, more important I, my, than that. Here's my I, guess. Here's we already my, have a Microsoft. We don't need another Microsoft. We need another Apple. We need a a, a company that's going to step up and ask us to dream about the future and improve our lives in some way, return some of that cash to the R&D department that's going to go out and do something mind-blowing. We want I, our minds I, blown. I, you we know haven't what? seen it from Apple in three years. You know, I've, he, I've just heard you say this so much now that I'm absolutely immune to it. All right. The fact is that uh, we don't need uh, an Apple to come along and save us from there being no Apple. There is an Apple now. We don't need to have another inspirational genius to come along. We need a lot of people, uh, you know, pushing competition into the marketplace uh, and people taking this incredible technology, which we have barely consumed uh, so, one so you're, thimble you're okay full with of. Apple being Microsoft and just no making no, a lot of profit. Microsoft and is Microsoft. Investors and not being all that interesting. It's anymore. that's that's you know. Uh, I understand the theme. That sounds like Nokia eight years ago. Why do we need? I didn't like one? Nokia eight years ago. I don't like them now. Uh, I liked There's Microsoft back when they. The people around the world. I liked right? Microsoft when they owned the universe, because the, it, it pushed standards and volume <laughs> through into the marketplace, and it created, you know, Visual Basic. What may not have been the best development environment in the world, but it. It was a, a development environment that for $150, you could learn how to program, you could learn how to make things move, you could learn how to get a job. It was unbelievable. And it fostered, uh, you know, the, the revolution that occurred with Windows for work groups when they pushed, uh, what is, what's the networking protocol? That they, TCP IP. Yeah, when they pushed TCP IP into a commonplace adoption, it changed everything, including the internet, yep. from being, you know, a military uh, uh, instigation into being a, a, a worldwide global phenomenon, which has resulted in what we have now, which is, which Apple has <clears throat> cashed in on. It's not like there's I, one. Absolutely, they. I'm not arguing with you, Robert. I'm just saying that you know the dream argument. Uh, 
is the part that I'm arguing with you about. We don't well, need Well, no, the Gilmore dreams. Gang has always been about what's, you know, well, not then what's the Gilmore Gang is going to have to change because, you know, you're looking for a Steve Jobs too, and you're not going to find it. And I don't think we need it. It's like I, looking for another Beatles. There isn't going to be another Beatles. Well, I, I, I agree with both of you and disagree with both of you. I, I, I think it's wrong to look for another Steve Jobs because that's stupid, but it's not wrong to wish there was one. I mean, it's okay to, if what, you, you know it when you see I it. I want to wish for something that I don't know what it is that I, I'm going well, to wish for. You know, I don't want to wish for a repeat. Me, uh, you know, wearable computers and self-driving cars and telling me about the future, whether or not we all agree on whether those products but are But I don't want a flying car. I never did. Not a flying car, a self-driving car. I definitely want one. You and do? It, it, absolutely do I want one. 37,000 people die a year on, in cars. Why do we accept that? You Why mean it'll be better that? when it's automated? Absolutely, it'll be a, a, a automated. Thirty-seven thousand people. The death rate will I be mean, one hundredth what it is today when we have. Uh, what about all the people that can't afford self-driving cars? They're the ones that are going to hit you. Uh, Actually, I, I was at a meeting the other night about, self, avoid them, about, about self-driving cars, and they told the story of how the cars are going to pace themselves in terms of distance and some, someone in the and then they made the point these cars will have to only weigh like one tenth of the weight of current cars because they will never crash and then someone put their hand up and said what about all the cars that are not these self-driving cars and they said oh they'll wipe you away one, one crash with those and you're toast <laughs> <laughs> so in other words it only works if the whole world is self-driving cars no that's not true that, that, that's absolutely not true these, these no, days see 360 true. degrees and see uh, and see all the time the same way. You, they don't get tired. They don't get drunk. They don't. They, they can see things, threats coming to them, uh, that you can't perceive as a human being. Android. Uh, you it know? doesn't and yes, get drunk. People will still die, but the mar the 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 numbers of people dying will be m far smaller than today. Second of all, you say the cost is going to be higher. That is absolutely not true because right now my car is sitting in a parking lot unused. And when we have a self-driving car, my car is going to go out and pick out, up people and, and get a little fee for that. So we're all going to spread our costs of, of these new devices over a, a much big, uh, smaller number of cars. It, it, the costs are going to come way down, and the insurance companies are going to pay for it because the insurance companies want you to have a self-driving car because they know you're going to get in fewer accidents than if you try to drive yourself. So you, you, all the way around, this society is about to shift in about 10, 15, 20 years because of this self-driving car. Back to the end. Uh, back dreaming back about to that the future because Google showed me something about the future. You know, Apple used to do this. Apple showed me the Knowledge Navigator back in the late 80s uh, as a video and made us all think about a world that turned into the iPad. And uh, I want Apple to be that company that makes me think about a 20-year-long world. And where are we going with this? What's going to happen? What's going to be the next dream? We ha Getting some 18-year-old up and getting him to dream about building new apps. So I would say if we think of ourselves as the audience and Apple and Google as the performers, uh, Apple is going through, you know, it's kind of writing a new play that has yet to be performed. And Google is in the middle of an existing script. So Google's done some interesting things for sure. I think the self-driving car, I think the glasses, I think the um, a bunch of stuff that's coming out of Larry and Sergey's mouths is kind of intriguing. The new Chrome piece of hardware that is like airbook like um, they've done a few things, but my guess is that Johnny Ive, who is busy writing the script for the next play uh, and isn't yet ready to talk about it, is going to have something fairly interesting to contribute, you know, in the next scene. And, yeah. and, and I, don't, I don't think it stops. You know, Jerry Schumann just said something really interesting, that the Knowledge Navigator vision came out after Steve Jobs had gotten fired from Apple, and it was John Scully. And John Scully also gave us the, the uh, Newton. And, you know, John doesn't get enough credit for at least trying. I, you know, at, at least keeping that What's the eye roll about, John? Of, hey, we're going to show you something coming in the future. And maybe we're going to whiff at it like the, the Newton was. But uh, at least it kept the brand alive in my head that this company is still creative, trying something. And it's going to bring something to the table that I didn't expect. The Newton wasn't a whiff, Robert. Mind. The Newton was uh, almost completely, it, it created this huge crater that Steve Jobs was the last person who uh, Apple would ever hire. 
uh, and but it was such a debacle that he he came back. So I, I think I you're right. Think I think the seven, Newton the Newton brought Steve Jobs back, but other than well, that, well, it brought Steve Jobs back. It also caused Palm Trio to be. It it kicked off a whole age of portable. An small, age of whiffs, yeah. Well, no, uh, Palm Trio sold it quite a bit. Palm was a big company at one time, right? Um, you know. Uh, and the it pilot. also set up Steve Jobs. The Palm Pilot, for right. Coming back with a perfected product that answered all the concerns of the Newton about a decade later. And all of a sudden, boom, they're the number one company of all time. The, Steve Jobs' essential genius was understanding how to figure out how to be able to wait long yeah. enough for the processors to catch up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll take the silence as an affirmation. I, you know, I, I can. One thing is, I can barely hear you, Steve. I can hear everybody else fine. I, I, your audio. Oh, is that works easy. for me. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right, uh, John Toshek, What do you have to say about anything? I think Scully has been been rewriting history since uh, he left Apple, uh, but I just can't imagine that environment being very good back then. And uh, and I think a lot of that technology was developed before Scully, uh, but I don't know. You know, you could say that uh, the Newton was, uh, you know, should have been in the right place at the right time, and and Scully killed it because it never got any market share or penetration. But it, I but, mean, I I thought it was really cool. I mean, to Robert's point, I thought it was great. But at the same time, it it requires you to learn a new language. You had to learn how to do all these gestures that turned out to be a waste of time. You know, it was just a, a time sink without any real uh, value. It was like, oh, oh, good, let's go play with what computing will look like uh, in the 21st century is what it felt like. And it turned out to be like that. Scully was the operations guy at Pepsi. I mean, that's what, it's what he was. But it, if the Newton didn't exist, and if the Knowledge Navigator video didn't exist, Steve Jobs would not have had the platform to bring the iPad to life. We believed in Steve Jobs be, because Apple was that company that kept pushing and kept pushing and kept bringing new. But why do we need to believe in it? Why do we have to believe in an Apple or, or an American? Because that's how human brains work. We we we. So we why don't you believe in Samsung? This or, or why don't from you believe Microsoft in a Google or, or, I mean, or a Microsoft? One at a time. But I would like no, this but, argument. I want wait. I want this argument to continue. But yeah. I just want them to talk sequentially yeah. rather yeah. than over each uh, other. John, you you were saying something. So I mean, it, a lot of people love Apple. It's, it's happened since the beginning. Yeah. They have it's an infatuation with Apple and the culture and what they represent. But it doesn't have to be Apple that is bringing this technology together. No, but it's going to be companies that earn their way, uh, earn my belief or earn the consumer's belief. I mean, why does your boss, Mark Benioff, why was he out so f in front of social and branding Salesforce as the social enterprise? He was he knew he was getting ahead of the market. The market is really showing up today, right? Yeah. But he was talking about this for two, three years now. He tried to get ahead so that well, the Well, he was talking about listen. cloud computing 10 years yeah. ago. And cloud exactly. and there, yeah. He's always been an innovator trying to push. And, and so there's certain But there's a difference. There's a difference between being, believe. Robert, there's a difference between being an innovator and being somebody who sees that the moment in time is right to innovate and get market acceptance. And that's think, what Jobs did, and it's what I, Benioff does. I think that's right. The, the, if you go, if you look at how Apple operates, there are really smart people in labs producing prototypes of the future all the time. And Jobs was really good at looking at everything and homing in on a particular thing, uh, 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 criticizing it, perfecting it. And then creating the narrative, and, and, and even better still, because I that's think a the, lot of that's the most important point. Can well, he create a narrative based on something that he saw? That's yeah. the most important thing he did. Yeah. No, and totally, he, totally yeah, agree. Get, and, and then he could get, deliver that. But then he could deliver the narrative because I think Apple can still create narratives, but they haven't got anyone yet who's as good as Jobs was at delivering the narrative. Well, it, it, keep in mind though that the the iPad really came from the iPhone, and the iPhone came from the iPod, and the iPod came from the Newton. 
you needed actually, that whole string of learning actually, to that's go not on quite to bring what these happened. products to market and to have that narrative keyed up in our mind. Oh, we we believe Steve Jobs because his iPod was so good. All right, but so we're going to buy his phone. And then, oh man, this phone really did measure up to the hype that you know was set for. So we'll believe him for the iPad. But now, what is the narrative? What's the next? So, thing so that, here you that just Apple's said something. Do? You just said something interesting. So take your idea that you just had of this sort of, uh, you know, stepping stones thing, and remember that what actually happened was that it did not come from the iPod. The uh, iPhone came from the iPad. No, that's not true. The no, it iPod, is true. They've said it was. My, my next door neighbor was on the team. The hang iPod on, hang on. Robert, that Robert, it has, it, it's been documented in a couple of places that what they wanted to build the iPad and couldn't do it because they couldn't get the market to adjust to it correctly and the processors and the screens and everything about it were not ready yet. So what they did was they downsized the iPad, called it the iPhone, broke into the phone market, which was a, a more obvious and uh, feasible way of being able to take down one of the carriers, which was AT&T, and they were able to get in. They're, the two teams were always separate. They were always, uh, uh, that's a little bit of a revisionist. I know the guy who came up with the idea for the iPhone. And okay, well, just, so you know a guy, not, and I've read it, other things. I disagree Robert, with Robert, your, Robert. I disagree was, with your scenario, Jean-Marie. what I'm asking yeah, you. Yeah, that's, that's one of them, and I, my next door neighbor was on the team. I understand. There are a lot of people who have worked with and for Steve Jobs. What I'm saying to you is, the scenario that I'm talking about is one that I've heard from a number of people. That's it, number one. Hang on, Robert. Context, though, Robert, if you want to stonewall me about this, go ahead. But I'm still going to say what I have to say. Thank you. So the uh, the scenario that I'm talking about makes more sense in terms of what I think Jobs' genius was, which is understanding how to get to where he wanted to go. Yes. He wanted to get to the iPhone, but the way to get there was through the the steps that he took with the iPad, and the iPad was the iPhone. He couldn't get that to work, so he went and made it the iPhone, and then broke through that way. And what the reason that I say that that's important now is, is that the iPad, and the iPad Mini in particular, which from all press reports Jobs was opposed to, and I don't believe any of those, is turning out to be a dominant product. We're going to look back in a couple of years and we're going to see that the 7 inch, the that sweet spot between the tablet and the phone is going to turn out to be the largest, broadest product line of all these. Going back to last week's discussion, I think that will happen when you separate the phone element from the display and you can wear the phone element and probably even the camera element and have the 7 inch display. That separation seems to me key because no one's going to hold a 7 inch thing up here and feel good about it. So back to the narrative though. I think that's I think overstated. An old fashioned phone handset is 10 inches long. People hold those up to their ears all day. It's just that we've become accustomed to having something that doesn't reach halfway between our ear and our mouth and talking into it, which is crazy. I think it's going to be better when you don't have to. But, but uh, back to, you know, back, back to but, but, but that's not my point. Back to the narrative issue. I, I think Jobs created the narrative for the next 10 years, which, which is, if you, if you just think about the enormity of it, he has killed First of all, Microsoft's business, uh, Dell's, not killed in an absolute sense, but its death is now inevitable. Uh, Dell and all of the Dell lookalikes uh, are, are going down well, today. Keep, keep in mind, uh, Dell sells a lot of uh, equipment to data center providers. I, Rackspace is a huge Dell customer. Yeah, I'm, Dell I'm, is talking about, I'm, call, I'm talking about consumer use yeah, of laptops to uh, desktops. Absolutely. And, 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 and what does that mean for Google's search business? That's got to be massive. So Google has to reinvent itself. Yep. Uh, 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 hence Android. I mean, he, he, really the next 10 to 20 years of our lives are going to be dominated by the narrative that Jobs began by choosing to do the iPhone. 
Yep. Apple themselves are, are not great at getting the narrative, uh, uh, of, of controlling the narrative once they've opened the window. So if you look at what people are doing with smartphones at the uh, software level, Apple's software is, is relatively poor, other than the OS itself. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 and so there's uh, all this amazing stuff happening that developers are doing uh, that they could never have done were it not for this narrative dominating that's calling into question all of the software that was built for laptops and desktops. So the next death is not the hardware vendors but the software people who stay stuck in the past. And, and so you've got, you've got the beginning of a completely new era of computing that's architecturally different, the cloud is different, the devices are different, the relationship between the two is different, how, uh, you know, what software does and how you use it is different, and none of that's really been invented yet. And Apple is doing, Apple and Google actually, Google's tied to the software it built for the cloud during the desktop era, largely. Apple is built to kind of a single consumer model of shipping software that, it, that's more comfortably shrink-wrapped than it is distributed via the cloud. And no one's really invented the next phase of software. There's not the new Lotus has yet to emerge. And here's the, another narrative. Even if you like Apple and use an iPhone and an iPad like Steve, uh, is Apple building the best apps? Demonstratively, the Maps app, the Google Maps app, is way better than the Apple Maps app. The uh, calendar t tempo tempo is way better than the Apple calendar app. And you go down the line of the apps that come with the phone. The Gmail client is way better than the Apple built-in uh, mail client. You go all the way down the line and the Apple does not have the best breed of apps. And therefore, I, uh, my belief that Apple has the talent to do something mind-blowing in software is going down every month. Now, it, it hasn't disappeared and I'm still talking into a $4,000 MacBook Pro, so I'm still an Apple fan and I still like their products. They still are the best in the market today, but my belief that they're doing something mind-blowing is going down and is that going to affect them long term? I think it is, but it might take years. I mean, Steve, Steve Gilmore, it's, it's sort of funny. I, he, he said, uh, Office is dead when I still worked at Microsoft. I knew that they were making $4 billion a year on on selling uh, Office, and it still hasn't died seven years later, Oh, right? come on. Give me a break. Gmail no, killed... true, man. Come on. Gmail it, it, killed it, Office. At, it has not killed Office It's yet. killed I Office. I still fly every the only day way that office, next to somebody using Excel or The PowerPoint only way that or, Office is going to be able to survive, if it does, and uh, I, we've already heard from Keith that, uh, that they're dead, that Microsoft is dead, but which, you know, I think is a assertion that uh, we should memorialize at some point. But uh, the, the fact is, is that the only way that Office is surviving is by copying Gmail and uh, Google, and they're you know they're getting shriller and shriller in the marketplace. Microsoft is now on a daily basis scrugling people, like uh, scrugling Google apps. Today there are three or four stories about how they're they're going after. Well, it sucks and it, you, know, you can't work as productively as you can with the twenty thousand features of of Office, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're in loser mode with Office, and they have been ever since uh, Google came along and said, oh, by the way, you can do this over the Internet. Yeah, but Steve, Steve I think there's a next phase. And just imagine this. Imagine tomorrow there's an announcement that Evernote, Dropbox, and WhatsApp have merged. I thought that was last week. But... But just imagine that 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 what I don't even know what that, that, WhatsApp is, by the way. Well, WhatsApp is messaging, chat, messaging, uh, sharing. Uh, Evernote is saving and remembering, and Dropbox is storage and uh, document viewing and editing. Uh, it, the world already has got the components of a future that is even way beyond what Google did with Docs and Mail and Calendar and the cloud. Uh, but nothing's really brought it all together yet and made us wake up and realize... No, I, I don't agree with that. As a matter of fact, I think that Robert was right on about the quality of Google Apps over Apple Apps. But it, what I think it's a further wrinkle of that. It, it's not the apps that are better. It's Google's infrastructure and system. Its ecosystem is profoundly better than anybody else on the planet. 
Yeah. That's just the way it is. Yeah, it's a cloud ecosystem. That's right. But their sort of psychotic behavior regarding, and I'm talking about Google here, psychotic behavior regarding trying to be a web company while trying to be an apps company is it's hurting them. And then they've you know finally started to realize that they have to get rid of uh, the notion that there's this Android thing and then there's this Google box on the desktop with a different operating system, et cetera. And there's, as John Tashek uh, pointed me at today, uh, there's a push notification uh, server that's been released for uh, Chrome. So they're starting to get the idea yep. that this is one operating system. And mm -hmm. they're also starting to get the idea, in my opinion, that Apple is right, that this is an apps environment, not a web environment. Mm -hmm. It's The web was a layer on top of the internet. Apps are a layer on top of the internet in the Google model, and when that and when they win that discussion, Microsoft's in big trouble. So Microsoft yeah, is in big that's trouble. Right. Uh, I, I think I that HTTP is just a protocol, and HTML is just a way of writing content, and the internet is bigger than both of those. And we'll, uh, are you going to let that go, Kevin? Come on. <laughs> I'm just letting you roll for a bit. <laughs> yeah, of course. It, of course, it's a protocol. I mean, this, you know, the question is. Do you need to have, you know, it's actually a very successful display algorithm, um, HTML, and it, it's getting yes. more successful over time. And the, the layout things that you, the, the native layout ones um, are, are less flexible and le less powerful. The, the Apple tools for, for native layout are crap compared to what you can do in HTML now. So that is, that is a structural problem. And yeah, you can, you can craft something better if you sit there and write a lot of custom code, um, but that, you know, that's always been true. The, the challenge is, can, do you need to do that for every application? And, and the answer is not for very few. Things you can do with HTML5 now are, are really striking. I had a visit this week from um, the Mozilla Firefox OS people and Telefonica, who are big fans of that, uh, talking about their plans to launch the Firefox OS later this summer. Oh, please. And um, they yeah. definitely believe that what Kevin is saying is right. And uh, 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 you know, so I, I don't discount that there is an HTML, HTTP play in the mobile world, but it doesn't feel as natural anymore. It used to be the most natural way to think. Now it feels sure. unnatural compared to Objective C or Java apps on Android or iOS. Um, I'm not sure. I think the iOS had, but feels creaky because it's missing some of the things that that, that we take for granted for the web. To actually link between applications and to move things around is really hard on iOS. You have, you Google have to just released Google just released a version of their uh, uh, Gmail client, which when you click the links inside of the of uh, email, it takes you to the app, not to the web. So, wrong. Which which app? I, I don't know. Go look in the thing when yeah, it comes no, well, through on I'm iOS. Saying. So on Android, what happens is if you click on a link, you get a choice. And any app. I understand. Play, I'm talking about iOS, the dominant yeah, no, but, operating but is, system. Google has to work around at iOS to do this, <laughs> right? iOS is fighting this the whole time. That they're they're assuming that each app is an island and has a separate um, protocol space. Um, and if you switch, click an HTTP link, you'll always go to Safari. Um, if you want to go to another app, you have to put something in front of it that isn't HTTP. Okay, so um, the web is dead. How about that? No, but uh, no. Kevin, that's not right. That's Android. not right. Uh, I'll tell you, with with just me, we created JM colon slash slash. Yes. Facebook has FB colon slash slash. Yes, exactly. I, I can address the Facebook app from within just me just by putting the FB yes, colon but slash can, slash. Yes, but you can only address the Facebook app that way. Whereas on Android, if you use an HTTP link, any app can play can. Claim the name but so what? Facebook or Android apps. is one. Yeah, yeah, I get that. It, Android but, uh, is one both, of both the operating systems. It, it how can it possibly bridge uh, to all machines? It's by definition not a standard. You know, is, no, no, no. You've got to remember, Tim Berners Lee invented URI schemas. He didn't just invent HTTP. He invented the right. URI, and the URI is available to anyone. There can be an unlimited number of URIs that start with something colon slash slash and hyperlinking works in those URIs just the same as it works in HTTP. So there's no need to constrain ourselves to HTTP. Uh, look, I agree with that. So we've got, I have to go to a meeting and uh, Keith here has to leave and Robert Scoble, I want to hear your uh, summary. Did you want some IAW stuff as well? Because there, there was some interesting stuff there. I do, but 
I've got like three minutes, I, and I still want to hear from I, Tashek about th what we're just talking about. So, Tash, I'm going to just organize it this way. Tashek, what do you think? Is the web the dead? Is the web dead? Um, the web is... Uh, all I hear is uh, like thundering. Plane or the uh, web's not dead. The web is uh, it's just not as interesting as it The cloud is interesting. And the apps... God, I can't hear myself. Um, the uh, apps that Apple has set up are done for purpose. They need a closed, uh, you got a bandwidth problem. Hang, hang on one sec. All right, Robert, say what you were going to say, and then I'll go back to Tasha. I, I was just going to give the floor to, to Kevin so I could hear. We will. We'll hear it. Trust me. I know uh, what I'm doing. I don't even know how to wrap all this up. I, You know, to take it into the theme, I, uh, which is what? I. Uh, you know, I just uh, am not hearing anything about the future that's interesting from Apple. I, yes, they are going to make a shitload of profit. Yes, they're going to return a lot of money to their investors. Yes, they're behaving like a traditional company, which makes me think they're the next Microsoft. But I haven't heard anything that has changed that narrative yet. No, that you're, you're I, repeating yourself. What I asked I, you was, what? How do you, uh, how do you absorb the idea that Keith is talking about in terms of there being. Uh, uh, a rapid uh, move toward an app universe sitting at, on top of the web, on top of the uh, internet, and not being subservient to, or in in fact, uh, necessarily it, it being important that it be connected to the web anymore. Uh, I think it still is very important. I, even in my Google Glass, I'm e even more in an app world. But all the apps talk to the web in some way. I mean, I can go, okay, but Glass. that's not the web. That's the Internet. No, that's, uh, this data is coming from the web, and it's being pushed out to the web. So It's, it's probably JSON data being reformed in the app, Robert. It probably isn't HTML. Right, but uh, but is the is the web just HTML anymore? Who yeah. cares? Like, it, as long as you can look at it in Google Ooh. Chrome, to most people, that's the web. Okay. And I can push a picture right. from here out to Facebook or out out to Path or out to Twitter, and you can view it on the web. So uh, this thing, even though it's an app world, and yes, technically it's not doing HTML, it's doing a JSON call to something else, but it shows up on my web browser. So who the hell cares well, about when, the, the, when those kinds of? That's the here's point. here's why I care about things. it. The reason I care about it is, is that right now Netflix is taking about three quarters of all packets on the internet. Right. Okay. So that says something. The quarter. No, in prime time, you know the. I, I saw some data. We'll do it on the next show. There's an incredible amount. It's it rolls up BitTorrent, and it just a whole bunch yeah, I, I, of stuff is being subsumed. By Netflix. Netflix my, is becoming this giant. My uh, new Comcast of uh, DVR uses the cloud and doesn't use the web, but that traffic is coming over that's the not, internet. That's not my point. My point is, is no, that, but this is all changing, right? Yeah, uh, I'm agreeing with what you're saying, but I'm saying that the what you're saying can be subsumed by this larger view, where things like the web become less significant. And that drives absolutely. When you get Google change. Glass, the web is far less significant than it is on my smartphone. Now you're talking. All right, John. Far less John Tasha, uh, last thoughts. And yet, everything you see is in HTML. It, it might be. I, it doesn't look like a. Web okay, browser. John Tasha, last thoughts. Yeah, the innovation is not going to happen on on static websites or mobile browsers or the website on a smartphone. And you just look at the stats. You know, it's five to one smartphones over PC sales now. I mean, it's it's going to be a different environment. So that web part that we knew, that we knew and loved, for uh, you know, 16 or 17 years, that part is dead. So it's going to reinvent itself. It's going to be something else. But the I think the bigger focus is cloud, and uh, how the apps are delivered, and how people are engaged Bingo. In, in the applications over okay. there. Okay, app world, We've we're about to get a watch, right? So uh, maybe you won't have Google Glass on, you'll have an Apple Watch. That watch is not going to have a web browser. It's not going to have something that looks like a web browser. It but might it's going to have web pages on it just as your glasses do. 
Exactly. It might HTML just is, the, was, is will be the rendering engine for it. And it uh, for that part of it. Apple are pathologically for that, people get its for that data it. from the web somewhere, but it's not the web. It's not the web that I. Knew yeah. Just think. Just think of the history of this. Of people said, go to HTTP. Dev, you know, colon backslash www. Then it was like, go to the web. All right, that's gone. People don't say that stuff anymore. You get laughed at if you go to somewhere and send that to someone. Okay, last uh, word goes Later. to Kevin Marks. Uh, okay, so the, the, the web is, is succeeding so well because it's becoming infrastructure for everything. That's the point. Um, if you're using HTML for rendering and you use HTTP for fetching um, then I, you, and argue that you're not using the web, then you misunderstand what you're using. This stuff is still there. It's pervasive. It's part of all these pieces. Um, the, the, so I the, want to drop a couple of things in to think about. We can maybe come back to them next week. So two things that came up at IAW was huge emphasis on personal cloud, which um, com mentions you know connects with where we started here with people backing away from Facebook. A lot of interest in building applications and things that do not depend on um, a, a big player in the middle uh, mediating who gets to control what apps you run, but actually connecting directly to the web. So that that was very interesting. And the second piece that there was a lot of talk about was um, FIDO, which is Fast ID Online, I think, which was um, annou announced by Google and a bunch of others as a way of giving us better authentication so we're not using passwords ever again, but we have physical tokens or um, connections through our phones to do that. So that was, that was a, a, a big roadmap direction from Google there, and there's some good articles about that showing up online already. Okay, I want to thank uh, Rackspace and particularly Rob Lejess, without which this show would not exist again. I would like to thank uh, New Tech and their TriCaster. I want to thank our uh, fantastic uh, chat room. I want to thank our producer and director, Tina Chase Gilmore, and her uh, waving hand in the background. I want to thank Keith Tier. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. I want to thank Kevin Marks. Thank you. I want to thank my cat. And uh, I want to thank Robert Scoble, without which we wouldn't have had this argument. And, <laughs> and I Many live more for to come. You know, it, next week is Google I.O., so it's going to be really interesting to see yeah, what, see they, uh, what they uh, talk about. I, I'm sure we're going to see a new handset. We're going to see a new version of Android. We're going to hear if they can fix the problems with Android, which include the fragmentation. Uh, uh, of the of the of the OS, it'll I mean, that, never my, happen. My brand new Verizon HTC DNA does not have the latest version of Android that was introduced last year, so I still don't have the latest innovation on my device that I just got you know, exactly. two months ago. Okay, and that's that's a problem. And okay. Put all your apps hear, run. We're going to hear Google's answer to wearable computers and a lot of fun stuff. And then uh, what? Two weeks after that is uh, Apple's WWDC, so it's going to be an interesting month. Yep, we're gonna. We have to save our quarters. <laughs> Thanks, John Toshek. We'll see you. Uh, I'll give you a call in a bit. Uh, by the way, next Friday I'm at BetaWorks uh, Beta Day. Yes, so in I, fact, so uh, not Friday, Thursday. Thursday. Uh, that's uh, thanks right. for reminding me. Uh, we will be doing a live Gilmore Gang broadcast from BetaWorks with uh, uh, Robert Scoble and uh, John Borthwick and uh, Doug Rushkoff. Oh, him. Yeah, he wrote exactly. A, he wrote, a book, yeah, called, I he wrote a book called Siberia, which was also the name of the first ever cyber cafe. That now, I most of the uh, uh, of Beta Day is uh, off the record, but uh, the Gilmore Gang will be broadcast live, I believe, around 2 o'clock uh, Eastern. We'll, we'll try to give some guests some beer and see if they'll spill the beans. And I will be in Mos I'll be on my way back from Moscow next Friday. Well, that sounds fun. Okay, I'm, I'm thanks to, to sorry. Thanks to everyone. I got to get thanks. out of here. Uh, okay, see you later. Thanks to everybody who showed up, and especially those who showed up. See you again next time. Bye bye. 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 bye.